Welcome, Director Topaz. The family ambassadors are still inside making preparations, but the big boss hasn't arrived yet. It'll be a while before the conference starts, I'm afraid. Huh. Quite a spectacle. The family really knows how to make things look impressive. I thought they would choose a more formal and low-key location for the conference. I didn't expect them to go with a luxury airship. About this, Director. I've asked around. This airship, named uh, the Radiant Feldspar, belongs to the Alfalfa family. This conference between the IPC and the family will have a direct impact on Penacone's future. Such an important event should have been held at it. <sighs> well, somewhere secretive in the moment of morning dew. The atmosphere here... It doesn't feel serious enough. Hmm. If I'm right, this conference is probably just a prelude. Whoever organized it wants to assess the IPC stance beforehand. This influential figure either has their own ambitions and wants to reach a preliminary agreement, or they plan to put pressure on us to make us back off. Ah. Oh. Your mind is always so sharp, Director Topaz. And when the big boss arrives, please remind her to be cautious and watch out for any traps. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, but I don't think that will be necessary. When she's at the table, it's the others who need to be cautious. Just tell everyone on our team to stay focused on their tasks and not worry about the negotiations. Oh, got it. I'll do it right away. Oh, and, uh, one more thing. Don't call Miss Jade Big Boss in front of her, or there will be serious consequences. I mean, really serious. Uh, uh, got it. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, Director. None of the important figures have arrived yet. Huh. Looks like the conference won't be starting for a while. Such a bustling place. I think I'll take a little walk around. <sighs> oh, are you hungry, Numby? Hmm, food in the dream. Eh, shouldn't taste bad, right? Numbi! Yes! <laughs> Ooh, oops, not to your liking, huh? Oh, sorry. I'll treat you to a nice meal once we get back to reality. So many buttons. How many centuries would it take to press them all? Huh. Didn't expect those pooches to actually recycle them all. Huh? What are these? For your safety, please stay away from those objects. For my safety? Are these buttons something dangerous? Not exactly. Lately there's been a prankster in the sweet dream who's been handing out strange button devices to anyone he meets. According to those involved, he said something like, Just press this button and all of Penacone will explode! Luckily, no one believed him. Still, the Bloodhound family collected these buttons just to be on the safe side. Where's that prankster? Haven't the hounds caught him yet? <laughs> yeah, that guy has some skills, I'll have to admit that. However, you know, the Bloodhound family won't give up. Whoever disrupts order in the dreamscape will face severe consequences. 
Anyway, the family will deal with these things. Please, kindly keep your distance. Greetings, madame. What can I do for you? Hello. Could you tell me more about the Radiant Feldsvar? I assume you are the ambassador of the IPC Strategic Investment Department. It's my honor to assist you. The Radiant Felspar is owned by Mr. Odie Alfalfa, head of the Alfalfa family. Mr. Alfalfa invested a significant amount in building this luxurious airship an Ember era ago, and it has been sailing across the 12 hours of the dreamscape ever since. Oh, so it's owned by old Odie himself. No wonder the ship is so lavishly decorated. Indeed, Mr. Alfalfa has impeccable taste. Only the most prestigious guests are invited by the Alfalfa family to board this airship. Please allow me to continue my introduction. The Radiant Felspar had been cruising over the Sea of Dreams in Penacony for an entire Ember era. But its voyage was temporarily halted due to the recent reverberation. Reverberation? <laughs> Such a formal way of putting it. You're really downplaying the whole thing. <laughs> I apologize. Please continue. <laughs> Following the previous reverberation in the Sweet Dream, the Radiant Felspar had to suspend its voyage temporarily. Thankfully, the factors that disrupted the dreamscape have been resolved. However, due to, well, certain special reasons, the Charmony Festival originally scheduled at the Panacone Grand Theater had to be temporarily postponed. So, Mr. Alfalfa suggested relocating the Charmony Festival to the Radiant Felspar, taking this opportunity to announce the resumption of the airship's voyage. Ah, oh, well, that would meet the family's needs and also create momentum for Mr. Alfalfa himself. Quite fitting for a legendary tycoon like him. Thank you for explaining matters to me. Goodbye. Hello? The Talent Motivation Department? Again? Internal review? Will it ever end? Uh, I'm working on a major project. I don't have time to squabble with you guys. I, the way I handled the Urillo case was approved by senior management, and all of the project logs and calls are complete. Can't you check on them yourselves? I just don't understand. Why are you so fixated on this minor case and constantly escalating it? I... Seriously, what's your purpose? Sounds exhausting. Why not just hang up? In my opinion, you handled that project quite well. A little ball of ice in exchange for the Astral Express's good favor. That's not a bad deal for the department. <laughs> it's been a while, little Yelena. I've been looking forward to working with you. Never imagined this day would come so soon. Is there trouble? You can tell me anything. Just like old times. Ah, it's been a while, Madam Jade. I'm honored to have the opportunity to work with you. You're still so formal, aren't you? Forget about the hierarchy and treat me as your equal. No need for unnecessary titles like Madam. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it might take some time to get used to that. After all, you are a senior. Well, now that we're both members of the Ten Stone Hearts, I need you to be at your best. Especially since the upcoming negotiations leave no room for error. As sharp as you are, I'm sure you've figured out the true purpose of this conference, right? I believe old Oti has taken it upon himself to test our limits before the official negotiations between the IPC and Panacone. That's true, and it works in our favor. Do you know why? 
If we can reach some sort of agreement with old Odie beforehand, and gauge our opponent's boundaries, our future negotiations will go much more smoothly. That's the obvious benefit. Exactly. And the hidden benefit is that, as the head of the Alfalfa family, his action suggests that the five lineages might not be as united as the Odes of Harmony would suggest. As long as the influence of Harmony hasn't completely permeated their core, personal desires will always have their way. Thankfully, influential figures in Penacony haven't entirely suppressed their own desires. It's similar to the power struggles within the IPC. The supposed all-for-one philosophy shared by the five lineages. It's just a slogan now that the Dream Master has gone. After the downfall of the Yoke family, old Oti's faction became the dominant force in Panacone. Even if we consider only the succession order, he's the longest serving and most senior among all the family heads. Yes. That's exactly why we need to handle the conference following an agreed-upon strategy. It's like playing a game of chess, where every move needs to be carefully thought out. Absolutely. The three steps of negotiation. Listen, test, and strike. That's what you taught me. Pretty clear. Although, you seem to have changed the order in the Yarilo case. <laughs> that was based on my personal experience. I apologize for interrupting your conversation, but the family head is ready to meet the ambassadors from the Strategic Investment Department. Time to get to work. Let's prepare ourselves and meet that esteemed supporting actor. Remember, our goal is to create an opportunity for the IPC to enter Penacony. Aventurine has already made a small opening, and you and I, we're going to tear it wide open. <laughs> Welcome aboard my ship, the Radiant Feldspar, smart and charming ladies. Please, have a seat. Let's have a pleasant conversation. <laughs> Welcome aboard, my dear ladies. Forgive me for any lack of attentiveness that might have led to a lengthy wait outside. No problem at all, Mr. Alfalfa. It's my honor to meet you in person. You may not be aware, but the book Odi Alfalfa, the biography, is a must-read for all Strategic Investment Department employees. After all... To many, you are the legendary figure who single-handedly built the Penacone economy. <laughs> I expected no less from the Ten Stone Hearts from the Strategic Investment Department. You're definitely skilled in the art of conversation. I always enjoy talking to smart people because we don't have to beat around the bush. We can just get straight to the point instead. Since I invited you IPC ambassadors on board, I'm sure you've figured out the topic I'd like to discuss, yes? The future of Penacone, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Precisely. Those few words represent a terribly complicated situation indeed. Let's take that golden-haired guy who's not showing up, for example. He put in great effort and almost got himself killed. But what was it all for? Wasn't it eventually to create an opportunity for you IPC to regain control of the precious Astana? <laughs> the wisdom and experience you've accumulated over ten Amber Eras are truly impressive. Let's assume your assumptions are correct, Mr. Alfalfa. How would you respond to the IPC's actions? I appreciate your composure, Miss Jade. 
You must have witnessed much in your worldly experiences. However, perhaps you don't know much about Penacony. <laughs> Old Oti won't sit idly by when faced with a greedy wolf. <laughs> Please, go ahead. I'm all ears. <laughs> then I'll be straightforward. I requested this meeting before the official conference to dissuade the Strategic Investment Department from trying to lay a finger on Penacony. If you back off now, you can make a smooth exit and prevent the IPC from losing face during more important negotiations. One of our P-45 executives was attacked and nearly killed in the dreamscape. The IPC can't simply ignore this incident. Moreover, considering the turbulence during the Charmony Festival, Panacone's credibility has taken a hit in the public's eyes. Despite your determined attitude, the issues plaguing Panacone are real, are they not? You use the term real, Miss Topaz, but let's not forget that this is the realm of dreams. If you want to succeed here, you need ambition and unconventional thinking. Curious about how I plan to respond to the IPC? Well, I don't mind sharing. My actions will help Panacone take a significant step forward by self-listing and going public. Going public? If I'm not mistaken, you want to bypass the IPC and go public on a universal scale. Precisely. Instead of watching the IPC gnaw away at Panacone, I'd prefer to open the doors of the sweet dream to the entire universe. Starting today, Anyone in the cosmos can become a shareholder of the land of the dreams. This is the path of harmony I'll choose. <laughs> this reform should have been implemented earlier, but unfortunately, the Oak family were a bunch of blockheads blinded by order. <laughs> Their level of intellectual flexibility doesn't even come close to an old fellow like me. Thanks to the little um, reverberation earlier, the biggest obstacle between me and my reforms has been eliminated. <laughs> the Alfalfa family will publicize the financial results of Sweet Dream Paradise, so that the entire universe can see that Despite the catastrophe, Penacone still holds immense potential and opportunities, and that the family remains confident in its future. Hmm. Crisis and opportunity are two sides of the same coin. So, you've been waiting for the right moment for Penacone to regain the spotlight. And if Penacone should seize this opportunity to overcome adversity, even if the IPC tries to intervene, every move we make will be scrutinized by trillions of people. <laughs> now I'm convinced that you've indeed familiarized yourself with my biography, Miss Jade. So, about your next move. Please, consider it carefully. Indeed. We need some time to digest such a wealth of information. I suggest we conclude the first half of our conference, Mr. Alfalfa. Please allow Topaz and me to confer privately for a few moments, and to respond on behalf of the IPC later. <laughs> of course. Take your time, dear ladies. <laughs> 